What? So everyone. <coughs> I didn't hear it. I'm still trying. You might need it one more time. Sorry. Mike Devery, Henry, Jeff with Pro West. Henry, do you have the last name? Greg. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So much. <laughs> Just for the record. <clears throat> Mike, you got the dirty boots on today. Yeah, we, we got a great tour of uh, <coughs> B3 today. Quite the project. We'd love to show it to you guys. How about now? Yeah, <laughs> let's go. All right, our meeting is uh, welcome to our study session. Today is May the 24th. The time is 4 20. That's ready a uh, uh, feedback somewhere. We are now in, I have now called the meeting to order. Your... I'm on mute. Microphone, the microphone is behind. And now it's off. Are you doing my screen? That should be better. Okay. Dr. Brady, if you could pull up those documents, then I'll start the sure. presentation. Right. President thank Wells, you. member of the board, thank you for this study session. Thank you, uh, as you know, yesterday was the deadline for receipt of proposals for the Bond Management Construction Management RFP. We received seven proposals. We're still going through them to make sure that, um, that they dotted their I's and crossed their T's, but they all look on the surface that they were responsive proposals. And in no particular order, I'll just read it into the record who responded. Uh, answer advisory. And I think it's up there. On the screen it is um, CBRE. Under Salari. Under Salari. I think we're pronouncing it correctly. Cummy. C U M M I N G. Cummy. Telecube. Aragon Engineering and Management. And uh, Rochlin, R A C H L I N. I'm not sure if that's a correct, correct pronunciation. So those that should add up to seven, I believe. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's great. Yep. So we're doing an initial review of those seven. And what I can tell you at this point is that of the seven, Five of them have indicated that they're okay with the contract parameters that we provided them. So if you remember, there was an amendment on the RFP where we had our uh, attorneys draft a contract. Uh, and, and five of the seven proposals, they accepted the language of our draft contract. The two that didn't, Ms. Marcus, was uh, CBRE. And they uh, uh, are, are probably the, the biggest firm. They're worldwide. They're huge. Um, and then uh, Telecube uh, had res one of reservations on contract language. So five of the seven accepted our contract language proposals. Um, and at this point, we continue to go through the uh, proposals. If you can pull up the ranking. Uh, criteria, Dr. Brady, we can talk about that because I want the board to have some input on that. Make that any larger. <laughs> Please. Wait, on the, the contract, um, you can negotiate the contract. Yes, yes, we can negotiate the contract. One of the things, one of the reasons we put that contract language in was because of uh, uh, the board's uh, concern about indemnification language. Mm -hmm. So um, the fact that five of the seven firms accepted our indemnification language probably will go a long way in this process of getting the contract signed. Mm -hmm. If that, if those are if those are ones that you choose to go forward with. 
So you can see here, these are our rating uh, metrics uh, on the screen. Uh, and we've assigned percentages. So I'll just go through them quickly. Uh, alignment with district goals is 5%. Uh, management team technical expertise, 5%. Uh, program construction uh, experience is 7.5%. Demonstrated interface with DSA, OPSC, uh, state allocation board, 10%. Uh, demonstrated experience interfacing with uh, DTSC and CalGEM, 10%. Uh, experience with construct construction adjacent to public transit or municipality municipal projects, 5%. Experience with oil well abandonment, 5%. Um, availability of qualified staff, 5%. Uh, general approach to providing services, 2.5% approach to communicating with district administration and board, 5%, approach to developing and adhering to product schedules, 5%, pricing, 20%, and then the final oral interview, interview and presentation at 15%. So if the board wants to make any changes to these percentages, as long as they add up to 100, you go, go right ahead. So is there anything that, that seems out of sort? So the ratings are for compatibility, basically, to see what percent. Right. Where does this matrix come from? Is this an accepted one that's used universally, or is this the one that we have more or less set up with our parameters? No, this is kind of a universal structure, but we added things related to like the oil well and the public transit, things that are unique to the district, but the other ones are pretty much standard. Okay, thank you. At this, at this point, how important do you the um, oil well abandonment remediation and decommissioning? Well, we still have three left that we have to do something with. So it's fairly important. Um, and, and going through these, and I have not read all of them page, you know, uh, back to front, there are a couple of firms in here that have experience with oil well remediation, the ones that I've got to so far. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of surprised, shocked and surprised that, that some people do have experience with this already. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it, it does bear uh, some point that we need to uh, assign to that, but it, it doesn't need to be uh, whatever we have at five percent. It could be it's elected, if it's smaller or whatever. Because they're not doing that. Right, they're right. just managing. Um, and that is the same with the DTSC and Calgem to some degree. Well, I would say probably DTSC not with those. Yeah, I think those would probably be more important. More important. For me, given the nature, sorry, given the nature of some of the issues that we've uh, seen, I, I, I mean, I think that the approach in communication, both with district administration and the board, feels a little bit low to me. I would also say that the fifteen percent substantive that's applied to the oral interview and presentation, that to me, oral interview and presentation just gives us a better understanding of, of the other substantive areas. So, I, I mean, for me, I wouldn't necessarily put 15% on oral interview and presentation. To me, what I would be looking for more when I look at these buckets is, is just the overall kind of communication, feedback, just how, how are we kind of working together? The 5% the there just feels a little bit low to me, but that's my first instinct. Uh, yeah, I think from a, a developing and hearing schedules, uh, technical experience, uh, management experience, I think are more important than the demonstrated interfacing with DTSC. But I think DTSC is, is important, but I don't think it's more important than the experience overall. I'd agree with that. So we could increase uh, construction management team technical expertise to 10% and then management team experience to 10%. How are you differentiating technical experience and team experience? Uh, technical experience is more, more targeted uh, to a specific. In what way? Um, let's say they've dealt with some type of specific seismic issue. And 
team experience is really they've been in the business 20 years, they've been in the business 30 years, they, you know, as a team. And technical experience expertise would be I'd be looking for, you know, you have people on staff that have dealt with, you know, seismic really for us, modernizations really for us, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, but a construction manager that's been doing this for 15 years versus someone that's been doing this for five years, where is that? In? That would be team experience. So I would say that that's an, that should be what you want. So team experience? Mm -hmm. So longer in business? Mm -hmm. it's demonstrated experience as a construction I, I, um, I mean, somebody's been doing this for five years versus someone who's been doing this for 15 years. I'd like to know in what capacity they're serving in other areas, in other um, districts or jobs or whatever, if they're doing program management or construction management. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to know. Would that be a, like a question that we had yeah. asked during the oral interview? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. um, I would imagine that they would have people that, when you're having people that are on the project and you're having someone that's overseeing and on more bond management level, similar to how we were structured before. So you have one or two project managers on a project, and then you have someone that's managing the program in terms of the payouts and right. uh, being an engineer or what have you on that, on that broad, the overall level. So I think that it's, um, you know, if you're, how are you differentiating that? Different to versus program management program. versus construction management. You're, what you're saying I mean, is program. It's kind of a, they get kind of used interchangeably. They get, but we don't, we need good program management. That's what we're looking for. We don't necessarily want dueling construction management on our sites. Don't, don't we have in terms of progress, the construction portion? Yes, that's why so I'm I mean, advocating I mean, for the program. Availability. I mean, I, I assume that any of these companies can work with the West in doing because they're the one that's under the contract to complete construction, obviously. So, if, 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 if what I'm concerned about is the ability to step in at this time and keep accountability going forward so that we assure the community that we are now there's no hiccup in this, we're going to keep going. In other words, we're not. We're keeping it going. I think that's very important. All right, so you're just going through the process now. Yes, yeah, so I'm, 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 what I'm hearing is that a little more weight towards technical and or team experience. Yes. Yeah. A little less weight on the interview. I, and I but a little less weight on the SC. Less weight on the OOL. Uh -huh. That's 5%. Anything else? Any of those categories that I could get rid of? No, they all seem necessary. Is the pricing component? Uh, I think you know public that they're working with public works and schools. I've been seeing a right. number of years working in the school districts. How many schools have you done? How many projects have you done? That you know at right. what what levels? Okay. Um, that would be kind of up there on team experience. Mm -hmm. so but, you know, how many schools have you done? Right, right, exactly. Specifically schools. Um, pricing 20%, is that too high, too low? Is that important to, is that important to the board? What are you actually referring to when you say the pricing? pricing so the, the pricing methodology. So um, with many of these firms, Ms. Marcus, they just charge an hourly rate plus reimbursables and don't necessarily charge a construction fee. So in our, under our current method, 
we pay for hourly rates for employees plus reimbursables for things that they need to run their office and other you know other people they have to employ plus we also pay a fee of the construction cost some of these firms don't have that fee some of them have they have more uh, just a fee for the employees so we're putting 20 percent on the way that they do 20% on what we think the total cost is going to be. Not on 20% as. No, no, they're not going to get 20%, Ms. Marcus. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking myself, where's this 20%? Can you negotiate that? Yes. The 20% right. is so, the weight of the evaluation. Right. This is the weight of the evaluation. Okay. Okay. I, I'm right. curious to see how many ask for a fee because I fundamentally, I think it's, I don't think it's good for us to have a fee. I, I mean, I would be more in. So I've percentage done, well, of construction, I think five of the five of the seven have waived the fee. I, I but I haven't looked that. at the other parts of their right. fee arrangement. Uh -huh. They right. probably make it up somewhere else. Right. Well, I just think that fundamentally having a percentage of the construction right. it just it's a conflict. So five of the seven have say have, have said in their proposal. They don't have to have that fee. Mm -hmm. But their hourly, how do the hourly rates? Make yes. Have to well, and they made double staff. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I think the staffing should be commensurate with the work. So, yeah. well, and I, I think, think so. no, but I mean, I think that like, for me, I would want to see that you're able to have a staffing plan and be able to see that, you know, what that looks like. And it's not that they're just going to dictate that. They're going to pad the staffing to make up for a fee. It's actually going to. I, just, I, you know, I find that interesting, Wade, because I looked under several other districts that have recently engaged in program management with other firms. Um, don't know any from our list, but but some that were from the initial list, and they all have fees. Yeah, and the contract. So right. it's weird that you're saying they're going to waive the fees. Yeah. Well, well, they waive. They they don't have a fee connected to the hard cost of the of the project. Right. I'm sure there's fees, there's fees. Okay. other fees, right. they call it something else. Okay. Right. So, all right. But the 20% as a weighted value is okay. Um, to not too high, not too low. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it's hard to say when you're not looking at the issues. I, I think, yeah. I mean, I think it's relatively important at this point because then what's what some of the reasons that we're changing out our management, right? If not to be the whole point of this in the beginning, if we all remember, the conversation was around we didn't go out for one originally, although we did, and we didn't yeah. get competitive yeah. pricing and all that. Gabe had brought up the pricing issue. So I think I think I mean it's important. I, when we say what the pricing is, I think you have to really look at what where the pricing is to your point. You can't there's fees that are put into other places. So I think you have to look at Yeah. Um, I think I share what with you. What control do you have over the fees? I think yeah. I share with you. You guys have a Google Doc that has all the proposals in it. I believe yeah. I shared it with you. Oh, are they? Are the proposals in Yes, the proposals oh, are great. there. Oh, great. Okay. So you can take a look at it. But okay. what, I'm, what I'm hearing from you is that 20% is too low. That should be. No, right. I think it's fine. I, I'd you, like to oh, look at That's the probably the most important thing on there. It's the highest thing on there. It is the highest thing on there. And that's fine. So, right. okay. And I might like to look at the proposals. Yes, yeah, so they're, they're on the yeah. table. And then maybe. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, no. Okay. Uh, the next item. I'm really uh, positive the response is that. Uh, the IOR update, um, we received 10 proposals, I believe. Uh, the director of purchasing and I uh, did a ranking separately and apart from each other, uh, except for one that we argued about, we came up with the same four. Uh, and there they are in no particular order. The, so, no sorry, order. Wade, Wade, sorry, what's the, but IOR? IOR, the inspector of record. The DSA okay. inspector. We've got it. All right. Sorry about right. that. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, in no particular order, it's uh, Nolan, uh, VIS, BPI, and Sandy Pringle. Um, all, you know, so, uh, the RFQ, is, it was an RFQ, not an RFQ. The RFQ is really focused. We already know what these folks are going to do for us. These people all have experience. 
I mean, probably all 10 of those firms would, would have been fine. Uh, we focused on, uh, what I focused on was, do you have staff available in July? Staff immediately available. Um, do you have experience with modernization? Um, do those staff have experience with modernization? Have you been in any lawsuits recently? Um, and, you know, of course they have experience with school districts because of PSA folks and price. Price was the final one we looked at. Um, so um, we have them here. We can, what staff can do is we can recommend one or two of these to come in and speak with us staff or speak with a couple of board members on staff kind of narrow it down if that's what you would like to do. I don't think we need a whole committee to interview these folks because we know what they do. I mean, that's just my opinion, but if the board wants to do something else, that's fine too. Um, well, I, need to, I think we need to shepherd along as quickly as possible because we need to get approvals from architects, engineers, and DSA right. on this. So right. if we want to try to make it through July, we got to get this going. But I would probably recommend that we, we narrow this down to maybe one or two and ask um, the principal from that uh, company to come in and speak with whomever we want them to speak with. Mm -hmm. Dr. Reggie, a couple board members, myself. Okay. Does, does that work? Yeah. What are the two that you would like to be with? I know you like Pringles. <laughs> I just like Pringles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Why do you like them? Uh, they have a lot of local school experience. Mm -hmm. um, the, the references of the folks, of my kind of folks, the CEOs, like their work. Uh, and their prices are very competitive. And I, I saw that. They, um, they're I also about in the districts that I was looking for when I was looking for these, that company came up the most as okay. one of the most used mm -hmm. for districts and like districts in our area. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so, I have okay. a question about their fees. Um, I saw their hourly rates, but then I saw they have other fees for like um, for the closeout for uh, admin. Is that because I didn't see that on the other. I'll have to let me take a look at that and see. Okay. Sometimes I hide that in the language somewhere. Uh -huh. but that's important. Okay. 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 Maybe we we'll wait if we are getting back together again on the seventh for whatever reason. Oh, you know, I think yeah. maybe we can do that as a subcommittee something before before, before the meeting. Yeah. 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 Second person, not in any particular order. No, I don't have a second person. Great. Uh, cons construction funding in three minutes. You want to pull that up? Yep. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you're like running a, out of money. <laughs> it's like a YouTube video. Exactly. So, I'm working uh, there's basically two ways, well, there's multiple ways for a district to get money. You know, you can sell property and get a waiver from the state on the use of the, the proceeds. You can sell property or sell assets and use it for construction. That's what we'd probably do if we wanted to go down a path. Uh, you can get a COP, which is our certificate of participation, uh, which basically is an advance on your property taxes. Um, you can do a private placement. If you have really bad credit, you go to a loan chart and get a loan. You can do that. So districts have had to do that. We would never have to do that. Uh, but if you go to the next uh, slide, Dr. Brecky, uh, we worked on a couple of uh, illustrations of what it would cost. These are all interest rate driven. So as soon as these were produced for us, they were probably out of date the next day. But you can see, in essence, what it costs to borrow $10 million, and I think I had to do it in a $25 million and a $50 million increment, how much that would cost. Okay. And, and you have different uh, varieties of repayment, uh, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Uh, you could actually, there's debt service that you could capitalize in the beginning. So, for example, if you knew that you were going to pass a bond at 25 or 26, you could defer any payments until that time. There's multiple ways that you can look at uh, COPs. If you did it as a straight loan, right? Um, and it's a little tiny from here and my computer died. So um, on the 50 million. Did you go to the 50 million, Dr. Mm -hmm. Reagan? Yeah, that's 
Okay, so what are you paying a year? What's your payment on that? So your payment, uh, if you had level debt service for for 30 years, your payment mm -hmm. is $3.1 million. Okay. Basically, changes a little bit every year, like this uh, if you can count. Okay. Uh, interest only is, of course, $2 million. So really what you'd have to do, the practical way to do it if you went down that path is you'd have to line item that payment out of your general budget. Correct. Okay. Correct. So it's doable. It is doable. doable. But we would have to uh, change your change your structure of your general fund budget. Right. And you, but at the lower loan, the 10 million, which we know if we go down this path anymore, it was less than a million dollars per year, which is doable. Right. That's certainly doable. If over three million it starts to get, how do we win that? Right. 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 So, okay. And the other option too for the board to consider is that, you know, right now you have a 30% a reserve. Do you take out a, a COP and, and immediately, you know, do a, a, a buy down of $5 million or $7.5 million? Takes your reserve to 15 or 18%. Are you comfortable with that? That'll change your debt service. So, I guess it would depend in the end where our final cost for the projects line up. Right. Really, what we need and when we need it. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we that determine. That's the driving. And I think, I think as right. we get up. closer to getting those answers and we know that we have a little bit of breathing room to make this decision, right. we would know that because you can also just go into the reserve and not borrow that money, just use that money right. for construction. You allocate it, right? You reallocate it into the general fund and, and, and use it. Right. Um, and then you, you store all that. Also go in the direction of changing what we're looking for to build into to that we need the money for. In other words, uh, right now we're looking at possibly the money that we are short of and what we can do with what we have, and then maybe deciding what we will do without if we can. You mean D scope? D scope or defer? Yeah. I, yes, that's another conversation to have. But we but what we do know. Um, I think pretty much is that we can take ourselves through getting pro building C started, but can we finish it? And that's the big question without borrowing money. Because maybe things work to the point where we have enough to start building C. We know we don't have enough to finish it, but do we have enough in our reserve to finish it? Do we have enough on a $10 million COP to finish it? And then defer everything else. You know, those, they, we, these are conversations that we have that. to have as a board, but we can't have them until we have more solid numbers and, right. and a scope of work, a schedule. Because then we would know when we would need That's why I'm money. saying, do we know what the scope of work is going to be and what's going to cost? And is there any There's some unknowns. There's still some unknowns. Too many. Mm -hmm. Right, especially because we haven't dug. The unknown really, folks, <clears throat> is building C and the south side work. That's the unknown, right? So that we have to take a closer look at and get tighter numbers so that we can make an informed decision. Because we can't now. And one of the reasons we can't is we haven't dug for building C, so we don't know what's down in that soil. That's right. So once we know that, then we have a pretty good idea of where to go. Because then it's a new building, and new buildings are a lot easier to budget than remodeling 100 year old buildings. Modernization. Right, guys? Absolutely. <laughs> The other thing that we'll need to look at in the future also is the possibility of a joint venture. Joint venture with the city of Beverly Hills. That's what I was going to suggest. Joint venture with a benefactor. A lot of rich folks around here. So, well, there's so many large naming opportunities you can do. As far as the city of Beverly Hills, my thought about that is would they set themselves up? Would they be amenable to setting themselves up to loan that money and have us pay them back at a lower interest rate? Yes. And that's what I would ask them. Yes, most well, certainly. So that was my idea. And maybe we could they could be doing better with our interest payments than wherever their money is currently set. It could be a win-win for both entities. Yes. So knowing that it's all connected to JPA. JPA. Yeah. Exactly. And the fact that they are talking about improving relate and, and working with us and the school district and things that have been going on and the liaison and so on. We've worked very hard over the last couple of years in particular. Right. Right. I mean, I think they're going to want to see us you know, as we are reorganizing and then getting ourselves situated and having confidence that we're going to get 
So I think the next steps, colleagues, would be to push ourselves in a direction where we understand the scope and the price of completing our projects better. And really not have an understanding as best that we could and have an understanding of where our current wallet sits and what we're gonna to have to be going out for. Because I would love to be able to, before we even look at the COP, have Mary and I go speak to the liaison and say, look, this is what we're thinking of Michael and sit down and say, look, we'd like to get this stuff done. If we want to do it fairly, we'd like to take a loan. You know, again, boom, and just get going. Just that way we can confidently complete the projects. That's that's what right. I want to do get to that point. That we have an assessment that's right. right. Okay. Thank you, board. Thank you for doing Thank you. this work. I appreciate no, I'm, glad I'm glad we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. Gotta get it done. Anyone have any other questions? Gabe? Okay. All right, I'm going to end this. Um, I will officially end our study session, and the time is 4.15. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff.